with the LSU Ag Center and we're at Gary Lurette and his son Stephen Lurette's poultry farm about 15 miles north of Natchitoches, Louisiana. And uh, we came here just to do some talking and find out what, what's going on up here, some new practices that uh, Gary and Stephen are putting in in the poultry houses. And um, before we do that, I want to just say first that Gary is a certified master farmer in the Louisiana Master Farmer Program. This program is an environmental program which is targeted at producers to address environmental concerns related to production agriculture. Stephen, won't you kind of give us an overview of what the farm is? Uh, what, how many birds you have, how many houses, um, okay. you know, what the operation consists of? Okay, this is an um, 11 year old broiler farm. Um, we grow from Pilgrim's Pride in the Natchitoches complex. We place around 29,000 um, broilers per house about seven times a year. We, um, we supply a plant that is a fast food plant. They are uh, mainly grow for the fast food market, so it's a smaller chicken. That's why we have so much turnover. Around a 38-day-old chicken is what we normally average, uh, somewhere around the four-pound range. The litter storage facilities and the compost, uh, we have one per farm. Uh, the litter storage, uh, we, we have, it's a dry storage, so we don't ever have to have anything out in the, in the, um, in the elements. Plus, we can um, store it there until we have a sale for the litter and until the, the trucks come in to get, to get it. And, uh, and bring it to the, the crop fields or the pasture lands. Uh, also, uh, you probably notice uh, I'm suited up and they are not, uh, and there's a reason for that. Biosecurity is a, um, a tremendous uh, thing, thing of concern, I guess, uh, as far as the integrators and the poultry producers. Uh, Stephen, why would any outside people need to wear this type of clothing? The reason we're not is because we're on the farm all the time. We don't have anything new introduced to the farm. Um, Y'all are introducing something new to the farm and we're not supposed to have any boots on the farm. So that's why we have to have plastic booties on the minute that we get out. Um, any, in the, the, the viruses can um, attach to hair, it can attach to your clothing. So we're trying to reduce the, um, the chances of contamination from outside on the farm and also from you taking it from this farm somewhere else. Well, what, what exactly are we going to see today? I have, I've never... Um been to put a poultry house where you know y'all might be doing some of these things right. so kind of tell me what we're going to see we're in between flocks right now we move birds out on monday morning and um we, we're we're wind rowing which is um it's new to us here in natchitoches complex we haven't been doing it but maybe a year or two mm -hmm. and uh, we've been getting some pretty good results with it okay well I, i'm gonna go ahead and put my hair net on uh, do you mind if we go ahead and take a look and see what's inside Donna, we're uh, happy to have you here today. It's been fun working with you the last several years. Okay. Stephen's going to answer any questions and show you around the farm for the rest of the day. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Well, Stephen, you know I've never been in, in any of your poultry houses, and, and I know this is kind of a new process that y'all started. So tell me exactly what, what is in these windrows. About three batches ago, we cleaned everything out to the ground in these houses, and we, um, we use rice hulls for bedding, because rice hulls are common in Louisiana, and that's what we use for bedding in Louisiana. But we've come back every batch after that, and we've windrowed these, um, these houses. Monday morning, we moved the birds, um, and so Monday afternoon, I came through with a spreader and decaked the houses underneath the uh, water lines, and we hire a, um, a contractor to come in and put the houses in windrows. We, we, we cook the litter, it gets up to, um, 130 plus degrees, and it's a uh, pathogen control. It also helps with darkling beetle control. Um, it also going to help um, dry the litter out, lets the floor dry out. Before we just cake out the top of the litter, and it w the floor would still would stay wet. Right. And so this helps um, helps, helps keep the, the litter dry. Well, how big do these uh, windrows get, or what is the optimum size for each of them, and how many do you have in a house? In, we have two different size houses on the farm. This, this um, house is a 40 by 500 foot house, and we've been putting about two windrows in, um, in these houses. They're about three feet tall whenever they start out, maybe three or four feet wide. Um, and they, they spread out, of course, as the litter um, gets shifted. Um, right. And, and they'll, they'll kind of um, get a little bit less deep, and then they come back through and run the uh, machine through again, and, and whenever they turn them in, it'll get back They'll to the original place. On the other farm, we're running about three windrows. Um, just that, because the width of the house? Just because there's a lot more litter in the house, and you can't put that much litter in a windrow. Um, as, as we build litter, um, that's why I'm going to have to keep more of it out and, and try to control my litter depth is so that we don't have too much litter to windrow. And I guess the more you have, the, the, the harder it is to manage. Absolutely. It's harder on his machine. 
Okay. We win row as soon as um, the birds leave, hopefully um, the sooner the better so we can start the process out. We leave it in wind row about three days because we get the maximum temperature around 50 hours after they put it in wind row. And he'll come back in three to four days later and he'll turn the litter over. And anything that's not been cooked will at that point be um, hopefully in the bottom and will be, get, you know, be cooked again. And we'll leave it about three or four days after that depending on how long we have between batches. Mm -hmm. And then we level it all back out and get ready for chickens and, um, and place again. Okay. How many, um, how many times a year do you do this? We sell seven times a year, and uh, I've I'm, I'm started to do it every batch, so we'll win row seven times a year. Okay, and um, like your dad said, y'all have 12 houses. Are y'all utilizing this on every house, or you're going to, or what's the? We're, we're, we're on the process of getting to be able to do it on every house. We have to clean out to the ground um, beforehand because the litter's too thick, and they have a, um, a hard crust on the bottom, and we don't want to grind that up because of ammonia problems. So okay. as soon as I clean out to the ground, then we start the windrowing process. Okay. And uh, is this an expensive process? I mean, for to hire a contractor to come in, or is it something you feel like is definitely worth the return? We've seen that it's definitely helped um, with bird quality and um, growth rate, so we think it's paying for itself. Um, it's going to help me manage my litter depth a whole lot better mm -hmm. so that I'm not going to have ammonia problems. Um, it is paying for itself so far, and okay. so we're going to continue to do it. Can you tell, have you, have you given any kind of number to, I mean, how many uh, chickens aren't, you know, they're not dying as, as frequently as they had been, or is it more so just... It, it's more in the growth and feed conversion okay. aspects of it and the cost. We, th we think that we're getting a, a quarter to a half a cent um, better performance from wind rowing. And that makes but a big difference on the number sure, of birds. Sure, whenever you deal with the volume that we deal with. Right. Very good. Um, have you tested this for temperature lately? Yeah, I've tested it um, in, in a couple spots, but we've gotten um, anywhere between 125 and 130, and we're just about 24 hours into the windrow process. And that's only 115. But so it needs to go. Yeah, it'll it'll, a it'll continue longer. to get hotter. Well, we've seen temperatures as high as 155 or 160 in some of these mounds. Very good. So so technically, you're taking litter out of here what once a year. I mean, you right. have to you have to take it off the top right. at least once a year in order to maintain. What's the depth of it? We're trying to maintain about four to six inches of good dry litter in the chicken house. Okay. Um, and the, it will begin to um, build itself where there's too much. And what what this wind run process will do is it lets me take it out when I want to take it out. Right. So whenever it can go on a pasture um, or a crop land, whenever there's a sale for it, I can take it out at that point. And so it makes it. Um, much easier to, to manage, and I'm not going to have to take it out in the middle of winter whenever nobody wants it and store right. it in litter barn. And you are just, basically you take it off site when you do take it out of the house. Right. I mean, we, all we are, sell it all, and they um, put it on pastures. Most locally. of it goes on rice farms down south. Oh, really? A okay. lot of it goes up north on um, a little bit north of here on, on a cattle ranch, but mm -hmm. the majority of it is, is goes on um, rice fields. Right. I knew there was a big demand for it. Uh, it's yeah. just getting the product to the right. areas where they need it. It's bulky, it's so it's, it's a trucking problem. Yeah. Okay.